Our study is on a remarkable Bible woman. As we will look at Ruth tonight. Now Ruth was a book I had to study twice at my Bible Institute. I had to study the book. I had to take the test on the book. And I had to write a thesis. Was he a thousand or more words about Ruth? And tonight we're going to look at Ruth. And we could spend a month. I wrote, I have in my files a, a commentary I wrote on Ruth. It, it's, it's a book of four chapters, but it is filled to the brim. Now, Schofield's notes, which I'm not going to use, but I want to copyright on that. I want to show you what he has. Chapter 1, Ruth Deciding. Chapter 2, Ruth Serving. Chapter 3, Ruth Resting. Chapter 4, Ruth Rewarding. I thought that was interesting. Now, I have a different one. <clears throat> and no one can say my messages are short. But we have four things I want to look at in Ruth. Now, I want to look at chapter one. The steadfastness of Ruth. Verse eight. And I always said to her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother at house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as he had dealt with the dead and with me. The dead would be Naomi's sons, the, the husbands of Ruth and uh, Oprah. The Lord grant you that you may find rest. Each, I'm trying to read, I forgive me. Re, each of you in the house of her husband. Go find another husband. She says, remarry. And Ophir goes back. Verse 13. And they lifted up voice and wept again. And Ophir kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth claved unto her. Ruth stuck to her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is going back to her people and unto her gods. Return thou unto thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee, for whether thou goest, I will go. Naomi, her mother-in-law, says, says, You're going back to Israel? I'll go back to Israel. Now, Moab is a group of people who have been cursed by God for their hatred and not helping Israel in the wilderness. And they've been considered ostracized. But it's funny because the law says the Moabite. It never said the Moabite test. So you see, God knows what he's doing. God knows when he wrote his word. God knew what words to use and what words not to use. So Ruth says, I'm staying with you. You're not going to lose me. Or return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodge, I will lodge. All right, you're gonna be out in the barn. You're gonna be out in in, in the middle of the night in the, in the trees. Okay, wherever you sleep, I'm gonna sleep. Thy people, it would be Israel, shall be my people. Now she's running into the apparent covenant of Genesis chapter twelve. I will bless them that bless thee. She is 
forsaken her Moabite heritage. And to become a Jew. Now already by marrying Naomi's sons. She's already now. A half breed Jew. She's a half breed Jew. By marriage. But her husband died. My God, now look at this, my God, excuse me, thy God, my God. She's forsaking the gods of Moab. She's forsaken any of the gods of the people involved with Moab. And she is saying Jehovah, capital G, will be my God. Capital G. Jehovah God will be her God. The God of Israel will be her God. That's, that's what Ruth is saying. Oprah's already gone bye-bye. So, old, uh, uh, Ruth has already stated, I will be a Jew, and I will have the Jewish God, Jehovah. And she can rightly say it because she was married to a Jew. She was married to an Israelite. Though the marriage has been absolved by death. Okay. Where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. Well, that would be Israel. Okay, so that would be Bethlehem, the house of bread. And what we see is a, a remarkable marriage vow that ought to be said every born again marriage between a man and a woman. My people, you be your people. My your God will be my God. Where you live, as I will live. Where I, where you die, I will die. And for, forgive me for uh, making mistakes with reading. Uh, my eyes are blurry. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left off speaking. So. There's the steadfastness. Okay, Genesis chapter 2. We look at Ruth, the hard worker. We look at Ruth doing work. 2 verse 3. And she went, came, and glean in the field. She's out picking fruits. And the reapers, after the reapers, so the reapers go on. And what the law, Israeli law was, when the reapers go on, anything they left behind was, was able for the poor and the widow to pick. See, Israel was not to completely... Uh, I don't know how you put it. They couldn't pick everything in the fields. They had to leave some behind. And what is left behind, just forgotten, Ruth and widows and the poor come along behind them and they're picking. And they get some. This, this is the law. Ruth is following the law. She's, she's, she's a Gentile. But she said, your people will be my people. I'm going to be Jewish. Your God will be my God. So I'm going to obey the law. Interesting. Her hat was the light upon the part of the field that belonged to Boaz. 
That's a kin. That's a kin of her husband, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Okay. So by her standing with God and doing right, her hap God has placed Ruth in the family of Abimelech. Eliminate. So when Ruth says to Naomi, your people be my people, that guy will be my God. She's also going to be, well, <laughs> the family that I married, that my husband died, I'm going to be back in that family even though she has been a widow of her husband who died. This book is so remarkable. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, said unto the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, they said, Lord bless thee. Evidently he was a good boss. Then said Boaz unto the servant that was set over the reapers, the, the, the foreman, the boss, the white hat, whose damsel is this? Point to Ruth. Who is she? Something of Ruth has caught his attention. Probably a beauty that's in Ruth that Boaz recognized. Hey, he's a man. Ruth is a woman. The servant that was set over the reapers, the boss, answered and said, it is the Moabites' damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. So, Ruth has already got a testimony. And it's a good one. She said, I pray you let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came. So she went to the people in charge of the field and she asked permission. She didn't ask for a government welfare program. She didn't go to a program and say, well, I'm a Moabitess. Yeah, I got rights. You got to put me in that link. No. She walked up to the man in charge and said, sir, can I reap after your reapers? And the man said, okay. Again, it's the Lord working behind the life of Ruth and the life behind Boaz. God is working. Okay. And she have continued even from the morning unto now that she tarried not she tarried a little in the house. All right, so they had some kind of house, like, you know, get a drink and maybe potties or whatever it is. You sit down. This woman, Ruth, the motivators, she's been working hard all day. And the only time she ever went to the house, remember that house is huge for her, she wasn't there long. And she came back and got back to work. She wasn't on her cell phone. She wasn't gossiping. She was not where she was not supposed to be. She was doing 
what she ought to be doing and doing it right. And the boss was watching her. And then Boaz speaks to her. Verse 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, that we Boaz, why hast thou why have I found grace in thy eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger, Gentile, Moabite? She's humble. She ain't providing give me rights. She's not rude. She's not crude. She's humble. And she's a nice girl. A nice woman. And she's got a nice testimony. Chapter 3. I call the Kingsman. Chapter 3. And then Naomi, her mother-in-law, verse 1, said unto her, my daughter, Shall I not seek lease for thee, that it may be well with thee? For now is not Boaz our kindred. So Ruth goes home in chapter 2. She says, hey, I, I'm, I'm working in this field. Naomi says, well, who is the field? She goes, Boaz. Now I was like, that man is, is kindred to my family, my husband's family. Who, Naomi's a widow. You have happened by the Lord of all the fields, of all the places in Israel, you have come upon the field of Boaz, who's our family. That's God. Whose maidens thou was. She was working with the women. She was working with the servants. Behold, he whittleth barley at night in the threshing. So they're doing the work of the barley. Now the barley harvest is not chapter 2. Oh, yes, excuse me. Yes, verse 34. So what has happened with the barley harvest is it's being stacked up. The barley harvest chapter 2 and there, there is merrymaking. There is drinking non-alcoholic beverages. Verse 3, wash thyself there, I'm talking to Naomi, make yourself clean, anoint thee, put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, the stretching floor, but make not thyself known unto the man. Don't go in there quietly, go in there secretly. Don't shoot off your mouth, don't shoot off anything, just shh, go in. Nobody knows. And uncover his feet. Take off the blanket off his feet. And lay thee down. And I, and he will let thee what thou shalt do. Alright, uncover his feet and lay there. Okay. And she said unto her, All as thou sayest unto me, I will do. So Ruth is obedient. 
We never seen that from chapter one. Ruth is obedient. She listens and obeys. She listens and obeys. She went down onto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her to tell her. When Boaz had eaten and drunk, that's not intoxicated, he, he, he filled his, his, his desire for drink, water, un, uh, alcoholic wine, whatever kind of juices they had. His heart was merry. He was happy. Uh, look at all the barley he got. Look at everybody that's working for him. Everything is going well. He didn't need alcohol to make him happy. He's a, he's a man of God. He says, the Lord be with you. And they said, the Lord bless thee. Okay? You know, they ate alcohol. He didn't need alcohol. He went to lie down at the end of a heap of corn. And that's not our kind of corn. Corn is the wheat and the barley. So here's this big heap. Of the seed of barley. After it's been winnowed. And he puts himself up against that, that, that seed. And it's comfortable. And he's going to take a nap. He's going to go to sleep. And she came. Ruth came softly. Uncovered his feet. And laid down. So there he is sleeping. She uncovers his feet, the robe that he's wearing, so his feet are bare. That's it. He's not naked. He's fully clothed, except now his feet. And it came to pass at midnight, and boy, you could take this whole book and everything about Jesus. But we're not talking about that tonight. That the man was afraid. Uh-oh. Afraid of what? And turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. There he gets a light, looks down there, and says, oh. So she is a woman. She looks like a woman. She smells like a woman. And this man, Boaz, is like, oh, brother. What on earth is going on here? And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid. All right, the skirt that I removed from your feet, put it over me. For thou art near the kinsman. Okay, what she's saying is, We are related. We, you are my kinsman. And if you will do this kinsman part, take your skirt, cover me, which symbolizes you will. That Boaz will be her husband and Ruth will be his wife. That's what that means. It's no sexual intentions. Listen, this is not America. This is Israel. This is the Middle East. So, Boaz acknowledges, but he says there is a kinsman that is nearer than he, that he's going to go in chapter 4, he's going to go talk to him, He's going to find out if this kingsman will do it. Okay, he'll take you, Ruth. If he, for any reason, cannot or will not take you, Ruth, I'll take you. Okay, closes chapter 3 and brings us into chapter 4. In chapter 4, Ruth is waiting. She's patiently waiting. 
is this other man going to come and claim her? Or is Boaz going to come and claim her and marry her? And it comes to find out that for whatever reason, the kinsman that can claim her won't. So Boaz can marry Ruth. It's legal. It's binding. It's according to the law. So now we're going to pick up Ruth as a mother, as a wife, as a mother, and a grandmother. And we're going to pick up something very interesting. Okay? So, Ruth chapter 4, verse 13. So, Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. So she's a wife of Boaz. And when he went unto her sexual marriage relations, the Lord gave her conception and she bared a son. Okay, now she's now she's a mother. She was a she was she was a Moabitess. She was a half breed of Israel married to Ruth's son. She became a widow. She said, my, thy people will be my people. Thy God will be my God. Now she's married to Boaz, a Jewish man. She's following the law. She has left Moabite and everything to do with Moabite. And she is taken to the Israeli ways and the law. She's married and she has a child. Now, the mother that she is, verse 17, and the women, her neighbors, gave it the baby in its name, saying, then is a son born to Naomi, that'd be the grandmother, and they called the name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Ruth is a grandmother to a man named Jesse. She's a great-grandmother of the biblical man named David. David's great-grandmother was Ruth. Now, Matthew 1 Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, nine. verse number 5, okay, so long, beget Boaz, or Boaz, of Reckon, and Boaz, Boaz beget Ruth. Boaz beget Obed of Ruth, and Obed beget Jesse, and Jesse beget David the king. Ruth, verse 1, the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, Jewish. Ruth is named. In the genealogy of Jesus Christ, she's the grandmother, the great grandmother, the great, 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 I don't know how many great grandmothers of Jesus Christ. She is the grandmother of David. She's the grandmother, the She's the great-grandmother of, of David, the king, 
She is a grandmother of Jesse. Not only is she in the line of Jesus Christ, she is mentioned in the line of, of Jesus Christ. Verse 5. Again, I apologize for saying the names and all that wrong and the words today. My eyes are blurry. To David the king. And in the eyes of God, David the king was the real king of Israel, a man after God's own heart. Saul was the people's choice. So whoever the people want in America, it's not God's choice. Nowhere does it say voting, you cast lots. So, Luke 3, the Gospel of Luke, it's a remarkable woman, and we're just, listen, we're just doing the, the, the tip of the iceberg for Ruth. We're not done all of Ruth. Listen, we, we have done Ruth in a Bible chapter study, and it, it was long. And if I get into every verse, Luke 31, Luke 131, which was the son of, now, now this in part, verse 23, Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which is the son of Haley, Okay, 31. So this is the genealogy. This is the genealogy which was the son of Malia, which is the son of Menem, which is the son of Malayev, which is the son of Nathan, which is the son of David, which is the son of Jesse, which is the son of Obed, which is the son of Boaz, which was the son of Solomon. There is David, there is Jesse, there is Obed, there is Ruth's son, her grandson, her great grandson. And you run all the names of son of and son of all the way back to Jesus. Jesus is, is a great, 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 great grandson of Ruth. Jesus is the great, 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 great grandson of David. And this comes out of a four chapter book. In the King James 1611 Bible, untampered of a Moabite woman named Ruth. It's that simple. It's that wonderful. Praise the Lord. 